Now let's pretend that it's time to do some cleaning. Wheels are starting to look a little dirty. And so it's good to clean the wheels. Now cleaning does not require complete disassembly of this locomotive. So, let's clean the B-cab. There are cover plates that hold each axle in place and so we're going to remove these and we have complete access to the wheels as far as cleaning crud off the wheels. It's also helpful to have a paper towel or some kind of tissue to be able to clean the wheels with once you get them out. They're held on by a Phillips screwdriver, the cover plate, so we're going to remove that right now. Once again, be very gentle when you hold this locomotive. See how the screw sticks to the magnetized screwdriver. I recommend you do one truck at a time, otherwise the wheels will get all confused. It's important to maintain electrical polarity. These are not all assembled the same, uh, meaning the front trucks are different, the rear trucks are different, and since it runs front to back, they're reversed. So, you have to treat each one separately. Let's look at this one. Sometimes if you get under it and pry it just a little, there it goes. Okay, this one has solid wheel touching the axle is on this side. The black plastic insulator is on this side. So on this truck, all the wheels, the black plastic is on this side. So I want to insert it back the same way. Otherwise, I'll have an electrical short with my decoder. Clean the wheels. Clean the middles. All right, that one's ready to go. Now, let's go ahead and orient it. So, solid goes that way. That's where that one goes. Clean the next one. And, all right. Now, this one is an undecorated sample. The finished locomotives have blackened wheels so it'll be a little harder to tell which is the insulated side and which is the solid side but it will be important that you at least maintain the orientation alright since we're talking about maintenance there is one important thing to talk about while we're in the neighborhood this front truck has a screw that holds it on and that screw can come loose so there is a dab of super glue on the threads on this side of that truck so that that screw will be able to pivot without coming loose. Super glue breaks loose easily, so if you ever have to disassemble the locomotive, you can easily uh, add some back and make the screw tight again. All right, let's put the wheels back. We don't want to go to the, the next truck until I'm finished with the first one. Insulated side is toward me on this one. Cover plate has a bump, raised portion. The raised portion is for the front wheel. And I can just pick up a screw. Get it fairly tight, and then make sure you the, the rear wheel here is able to be totally free, and then go back and make your last tightening move. Okay, there are two screws that retain the back cover plate. Notice one of the things that makes this locomotive totally different from the NJ International one produced much earlier, about 20 years earlier, is that this one has four powered axles, not just two. So there's vastly superior traction. 
remove the cover plate and we'll clean these wheels now look at this one see notice they're opposite this is one rail this is the other rail each truck picks up electricity from only one rail so the insulated wheels are on the far side this time solid wheels are toward me so they're reversed from each other and I won't take the time to clean every one but you can clean that out and also notice that once this is all the wheels are removed now you could use a q-tip or some other object to get in here and clean out these areas that uh, collect electricity from the axles themselves all right that's the number one maintenance issue that you might have there's really only one thing left aside from uh, the general lubrication you could add just a little bit of grease to this I would do it when it's totally assembled cover plate back on it's hard to do while on a camera This dropped on the floor, so it now is subject to having all kind of dust on it. So let's clean this off very well. And this is a good time to talk about. There is, this is stamped metal. So this has rounded edges on this side. That side has flat edges. It's a little rougher on this side. So I always mount the rounded side toward the axles to reduce friction as much as possible. And one reason I had a little trouble is because I normally use an optivisor. would not tighten the screw all the way until you get both of them in. Once again, don't grab hold of that railing right there. Okay, we're cleaned and this one's ready to run again. Obviously repeat for the other one. Okay, we want to lubricate this now. Personally, I like this Labell white grease with some Teflon of some kind in it. I've always gotten good results from it. All we need to do is just put a little bit right on the gears. Squeeze, there we go, just a dab. then you may put just a little tiny, tiny bit of oil I love these applicators with the tiny micro tip just a little spot right there you don't want to use too much alright this one's ready to go Now the only reason that you would need to take the shell off under normal circumstances is to get at the motor bearings. Sooner or later they'll eventually need to be oiled. They're oiled when they come from my hands but they eventually will need to be oiled. So at this moment what we've done is we've removed the shell, we've unplugged the plugs that go to the LEDs and the shell itself, and we have removed the decoder. So at this moment, that's all we really need to be able to do. So, I use to oil, I love to use these 
oilers that have very, very micro tips. I think Atlas may still sell one of these. Okay, here's the mechanism. And of course, we just have two bearings. One of them is right there in the very back. And all we have to be able to do to get to it is just add a drop or so. Just a little tiny bit. There, it's, That's enough right there. That's an easy one, of course. The hard one is to get at the one that's in there between the wiring harness behind the flywheel. And there, this was designed intentionally with a gap so that I can get the tip in there, squeeze just a little bit of oil in there, and we are set, ready to put the shell back on. This has been lubricated. Uh, if I want to just sort of test it, run it for a moment, I can put the analog plug in, and it will run under regular DC. 